Page 98. Listening for main ideas. A. Close your book. Listen to the lecture and take notes. As we have seen in this class, the history of the computer is a long one, starting with ideas from the 17th century. But today, I'll be discussing a turning point in the history, a time when the dream of a computer became reality. I'm talking about the building of ENIAC, spelled E-N-I-A-C, the first electronic computer. There are several elements to this story. I'm going to start by discussing the reasons why the computer was built. Then we'll look at the two engineers on the project, the men who designed the computer. Then I'll describe the computer itself. Finally, I'll tell you what happened after ENIAC was built, what happened to the engineers who built it and to the computer itself. So, let's begin with the reason why the computer was built. Work on ENIAC started in July of 1943 in the middle of World War II at the University of Pennsylvania. It was a secret project paid for by the United States Army. Previous to ENIAC, the Army had groups of young women who did the calculations for their scientific projects. These women were actually called computers. These women, the computers, they worked with adding machines to do the calculations by hand. Of course, this was very slow, and they made some errors. The Army wanted a way to do faster and better calculations. For this reason, they decided to try to build an electronic computer. Now, several scientists at this time were thinking about ways to design a computer. But most felt it was too difficult, using the technology of the time. However, the Army really needed a way to do faster calculations, so it was willing to take this risk, to try building it. And so the project to build ENIAC began. Okay, let's look at the engineers on the project. The two engineers who designed the computer were named John Mackley and J. Presper Eckert. The first engineer, John Mackley, was a physicist. He was 35 years old when the ENIAC project started. He first became interested in building a computer because he wanted to predict the weather. But the calculations for this were impossible. It would take years to compute all the world's weather information. So he became interested in the idea of doing the calculations electronically. J. Presper Eckert, the second engineer on the ENIAC project, was much younger. He was only 24 years old when he started work on it. He was a PhD student studying electrical engineering. He was a brilliant engineer who, from the time he was a child, loved to design complex electronic machines. In this team, Mackley was the idea guy. He had a lot of great ideas. Eckert was the engineer. He found a way to make the ideas work. These two men were probably the most important elements of the project. They worked very well together and were brave enough, or maybe crazy enough, to try something totally new. Now, what did ENIAC look like? Well, if we compare it to computers today, of course they are very different. First, ENIAC was really big. The machine filled an 1,800-square-foot room. That's about the size of a large three-bedroom apartment. Each part of the computer was about nine feet tall. ENIAC was a very complex machine. The designers had to program the computer to add, remember numbers, and so on. There were 40 different elements in a U-shape around the room. In many ways, it was amazing that ENIAC worked at all. It had thousands and thousands of electronic parts. Each element had to work perfectly. But it did. It did the calculations and didn't make any errors. ENIAC could do 5,000 calculations per second, much more than any previous calculating machine. Of course, compared to computers today, this is slow. Computers today do 100 million calculations in one second. 
Today, you can put the computing power of ENIAC on a chip the size of the end of your pencil. But ENIAC was much faster than other machines at that time. It took two years to build ENIAC. It was finished in the fall of 1945 and shown to the public in February 1946. For many, it was the first time they had heard of the idea of a computer. Newspapers and magazines all over the world wrote articles about the amazing new electronic brain. But already, Eckert and Mackley had ideas for new, better computers. They started their own company, designing and building computers and selling them. And they did. They built two new types of computers, and they continued to work with computers for the rest of their careers. Although they never made a lot of money, they will always be remembered as the first computer engineers. As for ENIAC, the Army used the machine for nine more years until it was turned off for the last time in 1955. You can now see some parts of ENIAC at the Smithsonian Museum in Washington, D.C. Page 99. Listen for details. A. Close your book. Listen to the lecture again. Add details to your notes and correct any mistakes.